looks good. Uh, a few things we want to uh, mention and be, be aware of. Uh, I'll just go ahead and jump to birthdays and anniversaries right quick, so I'll make sure. I, Bobby has a birthday on the uh, 21st, and happy birthday to you, Bobby, and <coughs> the, uh, the Braziers have an anniversary on the 21st. And so we, we see them best on their special days. And uh, uh, also we want to be aware uh, that next Sunday is uh, we're going to have a guest speaker, uh, John Alexander, a young man that spoke here. Him and his wife visited us with us not too long back uh, from uh, uh, Gregor Church there at Morton. BB, BB. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, BB, and uh, he came and spoke, and he's going to be back uh, uh, next week to uh, bring our lesson. So please be uh, be aware of that. Uh, and uh, also next Sunday's potluck, so please don't forget that. Uh, and uh, it's always a good time after our worship service to be able to come together and fellowship and have a good meal and visit and uh, have some fellowship together. So please. Uh, remember all of those. Uh, we need to uh, also, uh, and I'm sure we have, keep our country in our prayers. It's not a necessarily, it's not a good time. It, uh, necessarily, it's not a good time. And we all know that there have been just as bad of times and worse times. But we need to always remember our country and our leaders and our prayers. We want to remember uh, the family of the one that was killed yesterday and those that two that were uh, uh, severely injured, critically injured in the shooting. Also, we want to remember uh, uh, President Tara, who was uh, uh, wounded uh, in his ear. And, uh, you know, looking at that, I guess it was just an intervention or just sheer luck that he turned his head at the right time. But uh, those that lost their lives, uh, that's, a, that's such an awful thing. Another just heartbreaking thing is that it was all perpetrated by a young 20-year-old uh, man. And to uh, get themselves in such a position to uh, undertake such a, a devious act is uh, something we can't imagine, and it's hard to understand. But we need to keep our uh, our country in our prayers. Uh, on a, a little higher note, uh, Andre had told me whenever we leave today, uh, that there's some little Debbie's in the kitchen for you to take with you if you want. Uh, so please stop by the kitchen and have grab some of those if you would like. Uh, and uh, so beware. Also, uh, are there uh, cards on the table to sign this week? Yes, okay, so there's cards as we always have on the table in the foyer. Uh, please, I don't know who they're to this week, but please, uh, Stop by and sign those so we can get those out to the individuals that they're addressed to. That's always great to get a card, you know, we, in, this, in this electronic age and emails and uh, quick communication, it's still good to get a card and a note on it. So uh, well, please do, uh, please do that. Uh, is there anything else? Yes? Okay, we're working on the teacher lunch. Uh, and we're trying to get a date. Uh, we've already got the full pork. We thought we'd smoke some chicken thighs for those that don't like pork. Uh, I'm going to do baked beans. The other ladies would maybe a bowl of potato salad. We'll mark a, we'll put a list out, sign up. Is the list out? Or no, we'll, we'll, but we'll get one out. Okay, because we don't have a date yet. We do know that school starts, first day of school is August the 14th, so that's one thing we know it will be just before that. So uh, so be aware of that and be uh, looking for the 
sign up list and, uh, and how you can participate. Uh, the good news is if you come and help, you, you get some full pork and smoked chicken, right? Kevin said that Camden had mentioned to him where he went, uh, him and his girlfriend and her brother helping to serve. Helping to serve. And so maybe we can get Camden to get some others. That other young people to come so, and, yeah. and uh, get in uh, a have a good start with their uh, with their teachers there to carry them some food and help them bring them a drink or two to uh, tea. Uh, yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great. Uh, okay, is there anything else? Yes, Pat. Does somebody mow this week? Huh? Can somebody else mow this week? Okay. We got it. Oh, thank you. Okay. We got it. Okay. If you don't mind, I'll I'm going to take a little bit of liberty. You know, with all the events that I, I mentioned and everything, I thought of a couple passages, if you don't mind me sharing them. We all know these. We, we've read them. And, uh, but, you know, it, it relates. There's a whole lot of the world that doesn't know these passages. And uh, my first one is uh, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to read verses 9 through 11. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. Also, the other piece to that I, I would like to read is in 1 Timothy, the second chapter. And I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 5. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead, lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires that all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man. Christ Jesus. Turn it over to Jared for a song. Thank you for that wonderful verse, brother. I'm glad to see each and every one of you here this morning. If you would, if you please turn to number 535. Number 535. We will sing the first, second, and last verses of this. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Glory, 
next song will be number 797. After this, we'll have our opening prayer. Sing the first, second, and last verse of this. Lord, we come before thee now. At thy feet we humbly bow. Oh, do not our suit disdain. Shall we seek thee, Lord, in vain? Shall we seek thee, Lord, in vain? Lord, on thee our souls depend. In compassion now descend. Fill our hearts with us to recognize our Creator and our Savior. We read in God's Word in Matthew 7 <coughs> chapter seventh verse <coughs> We're told here, if we have a need, or if we know of the need of a brother, we have the promise that there's something that can be done, and we can do it. Some of the chaotic events that have happened in our lifetime, <clears throat> <clears throat> certainly in the last few days are events that we as individuals can only contend with and pray about. Reading from the 7th verse, the 7th chapter, <clears throat> we're told <clears throat> what we need to do, should do, Reading in the seventh verse, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. What a wonderful, wonderful promise that is. <clears throat> that we have answers to our prayers. <clears throat> and we were encouraged to pray. 
every day about things that we need in our life, those spiritual things, the spiritual assistance, help, and encouragement that we need to live our lives in a way that is pleasing to our God. Bear with me, please. <clears throat> Father, it is certainly a, a pleasure, a blessing to be able to gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ, a small remnant of your family, of your church, <clears throat> but hopefully we are seen as faithful, loving Christians. And with it, we do what we can, when we can, to express to others our love, our faith, our belief, and our good fortune to have you, Heavenly Father, claim us as your children. For those of our number that are not here this morning, for whatever reason, it might be sickness, ill health, job, incar incarceration, hospital, whatever. Their issue is this morning, we pray that you will address that issue with them and with their circumstances. Address it to their benefit, if it be your will. Again, I say we are so grateful to have you with us as we song, sing songs of praises that we have the opportunity to come to you in prayer to give thanks and ask you, Heavenly Father, for the things that we need. And we know that our prayers will be answered according to your timetable, not necessarily according to ours. But we do know you listen to our prayers and that you answer our prayers, the prayers of the faithful. Be with us now as we continue our worship service, thanking you, Heavenly Father, for the reason that we are heard. Jesus, Jesus, your Son, became our Savior when he died on that cross at Calvary, carrying our sin debt with him so that when we stand before you at judgment, we will hear him intercede and hear that, that indeed our, our sins have been forgotten and we will be welcomed into our heavenly home to spend the rest of eternity there with you, Heavenly Father, and with Jesus, your Son, and with all the other saints that will be there and that we will hear that you will have mercy on our souls. It's in the name of Jesus, I offer this prayer and give thanks for all blessings. Amen. What hast thou 
heaven, we come to you this time and ask your blessing for the divine, which represents Christ's shed blood for us, and help us take the mind pleasing to our side, and help us do so with the movements of why he had to die for. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> concludes the Lord's Supper for this morning. Now we have a chance to put by in store the continued Lord's work here on this in this community, in this state, and around the world. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we just thank you so much for the many wonderful blessings you've bestowed upon us. Both the physical blessings you've given us that we too often take for granted the spiritual blessings that you've given us. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to put by in store to further your work. We ask that you be with each and every one that contributes to this plate this morning, that they do so in a cheerful manner. So prayer in Jesus' name. Please mark your songbooks to number 915, 915, and then turn with me to number 450, 450. This will be the song for the lesson this morning. If you would please, if you please stand for this song, it would be convenient. 
saying all the verses. Give me the Bible, sore of gladness, leaving to cheer the wonder, long and tempted stars. No sword can hide that radiance, peaceful beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words of Jesus spoken, hold the face lamp to show my Savior's near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, life of life immortal, hold up the slender by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven's shining portal. Show me the glory, guilt and destroyed in this way. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide thee in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till I shall vanish in eternal day. Please be seated. John 13, if you would please turn with me. John 13, 34, 35. Christ says, a new commandment I give you that you love one another. 
as I have loved you, and that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one another. And we have got to have that love. You know, there are those that uh, I know personally that uh, have, uh, in times past, that have uh, not come to worship service, or for some reason or another, or whatever it may be. And when we see them in public, we need to treat them with kindness. We need to find out what, why they are not attending. But we need to do this in a loving manner, in the way that we open up our conversations to. Reminds me. And in some and in some things they they'll say, well, they do come most of the time, and there are some that do come most of the time, but they're not here all the time. It reminds me of a story of uh, what a preacher had said. He was talking to a man who was supposed to be a Christian. And the man told the preacher that he went to church services most of the time. And it seemed and seemed to think that this had put him in a good relationship with God. And like I've said, I've personally known many people that have fallen into this same category. They go to church every now and then and expect that to fulfill their religious responsibilities and consider themselves faithful to God. What I would like to think about a few things this morning that we may put into the same perspective and then see what the conclusions we might draw. What if a husband was faithful to his wife or a wife faithful to her husband most of the time. And what if your car started most of the time? What if your heart beat most of the time? Another thing is, what if your children obeyed you most of the, of the time? And oh, I've had this happen before. What if your water heater worked most of the time? What are your conclusions about these things? What would that husband or wife be considered as faithful? Would you be satisfied with a car? Would you worry about your heart? Would you conclude that these represent examples of being faithful? The examples this morning I picked out with love, I hope you will consider. If we want to place those questions, if we wouldn't place those questions I give as an example of being faithful, then why should one think that he should please God by being faithful only part of the time? Jesus calls for a commandment in Matthew 16, 24. This is what he said to his disciples. Then Jesus said to his disciples, 
If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. And in Luke 9 and 23, Jesus says, speaking to his disciples, and he said to them, if anyone desires to come after me, let him desire, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow. As you can see, what Jesus is saying, that being a Christian is not just most of the time or part of the time, but it's being a Christian daily, all of the time. Jesus asked us to count the cost. We read in Luke 14, Luke 14, 26 through 23. If you'd like to turn your Bibles there with me. Jesus is saying that we must count the cost. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not set down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish all who see it begin to mock him saying this man being saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. We have to forsake everything in our life as far spiritually to follow Christ, to follow Him, give up, deny ourselves, and follow Him. Christ also said that if we put our hand to the plow, we are not to look back. We read in Luke chapter 9, you'd like to turn with me. Look chapter 9 and 62. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So we have to keep on. We have to encourage one another So that we can have that home in heaven with him one day. I'd like to read Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. If you can turn with me there. Hebrews 10. 
23 through 25. We are trying our best to come and worship our Lord. We are to try because He loved us so much. We read here what the Hebrew writer says. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promises, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as, man, as is the manner of some, but of exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So brothers and sisters, let us love one another as Christ has loved us. And let us encourage one another daily. Be faithful in Christ, coming together and singing praises and worship, and partaking of the Lord's Supper and remembering His death until He comes again on the first day of the week. We need to encourage one another, and we need to encourage those that we do not see here in the, that is sitting here with us. That's why we send cards out to those that have come and worship with us. We need to encourage them, not just by the cards, for they are wonderful. And like Daryl said, there's nothing as good as a card. A card is always makes someone feel good about it. We have our telephones and we can call. We have we have our cells and we can go to their house and knock on their door and talk with them if they are with them. I'm sure that they would. We just need to encourage one another in brotherly love. This morning, the invitation is being presented to those that don't know Christ. You have that opportunity now to come and be buried with Him in baptism and walk in newness of life and continue and have your sins washed away. Continue to walk in that life with the Christ. Or if you are a brother or sister that has fallen away, needs prayers of this congregation, you can now at this time come forward as we stand in sight. When we walk with the Lord in the light of Oh, 